Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the Barbecue Pulled Pork Taco. Alright, we're going to get started with our pulled pork tacos by trimming out a pork butt and getting it into some marinade. But before we jump into that, I just want to remind you guys, if you enjoy watching the videos, please head over to ATBBQ.com, make a purchase, grab some rub, grab some marinade. All of those purchases go to help support this channel. So here we have a nice big pork butt. This is maybe even a little bit bigger than what we'll need for this recipe today, but I couldn't resist. It was a good looking pork butt, so we're gonna trim it out. And we are gonna get this in some marinade. And because it's so big and we're going to be marinating it, we're actually gonna divide it in two today, uh, which is something we don't often do, but uh, is another way to cook a pork butt. Before we get into that though, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this fat cap off of here. So we wanna be able to make sure our marinade and our seasoning can penetrate all the way down to the meat and not just get stuck on the outside of the fat cap that we're going to throw away later anyway. And once again, if you're watching this and wondering why would you take that fat cap off, well the first reason I've already mentioned it's so that we can get the seasoning underneath there. The second reason is there's tons of intramuscular fat running through this whole thing that are going to moisten this piece of meat. The fat on the outside does not add extra moisture to the meat on the inside. So we'll save this fat because it's great for sausage making. I'll throw it in the freezer and we can use it next time we grind up some sausage. All right, so that's looking good on the fat cap side. We're gonna flip this over. You wanna feel around. I already took some bones off that I found that were still attached. Might have a little bit of cartilage here. That stuff's pretty common, so you want to run your hands over the outside. Make sure if you feel any hard stuff that sticks out to you, go ahead and take it off. Now to divide this thing, on the opposite side of the fat cap, there's this seam that runs through the pork butt. So we're just going to start by opening this up. And you're just going to follow this seam all the way down. Right here we have the blade bone. So we're running our knife right along that blade bone, just cutting right in between these two muscles. And then when I get to the bottom of that, I can find the end of the blade bone right here. Let me see if I can get some better light for you guys on that. That's the end of that blade bone, just straight down. There you go. Now you got two pieces. So we'll clean this up, get some of this kind of nasty tissue out of here. Again, we're exposing that meat where we're going to get the marinade and the, the rub to really add some flavor. I do the same thing on the other half. All right, so last, I'm just kind of looking around for any large areas of hard fat. Uh, these will render a little bit, but it, it kind of helps to trim them off. Now we've got that nice money muscle exposed. All right, we could do this all day, but I'm gonna cut it off right here. All right, so now we're gonna get our pork butt into our briner bucket where we can leave it to soak overnight. And we'll add our marinade here. So we're using the Sweetwater Spice Trace Chilies Marinade. They actually call it a brine bath and marinade because it uses both salt and acid to treat the meat. And we're actually gonna add two parts water to the one part of the brine bath marinade concentrate. So this dilutes this enough that it can get some flavor penetration and start to break down the meat just a little bit, add some extra moisture, but it won't commit chemically cook the outside as we leave this in here overnight. So you want to get just enough so you're all the way up to the top of the meat. You grab the plate, press that down in place, lock it in, and throw that in the fridge overnight. Now, lucky for us, I threw a pork butt in the marinade last night, so we're ready to go this morning. We're going to take this out of here now. Get some of that excess moisture off there. And then before we get our seasoning on here, we're just gonna get rid of some of this excess moisture so it doesn't wash our seasoning away. But we'll leave enough behind to work as a binder for the rub. 
And now we're gonna hit this with the Cattleman's Grill eight second ride carne asada seasoning. So we're kind of mixing our barbecue and taco flavors here. We've got the sweetness of the apple juice from the marinade, but of course some chili as well. Then we've got the spices going on in the carne asada seasoning. So these are lining up to be a really great barbecue taco flavor profile. So another great thing about separating these two halves that the uh, really get the opportunity to add the seasoning flavor on all these different surfaces that may not be exposed if you leave the butt in one piece. And of course they cook a little faster, although these two will cook pretty even. Even though this one's quite a bit larger, this one's got the bone in it, which is gonna slow it down a bit. All right, so those are already set up pretty nice, so we can just head over to the grill now. Today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640 pellet grill. We're running cherry and pecan pellets at 250 degrees. So we'll throw these on the top rack here. We'll close this up. Get that smoke magic going. Now we're not cooking to a time or a temperature at this point. We're just looking to form a nice bark on the outside. We're kind of going to respond to the color and let that determine how long it is before we throw these into some foil, add a little bit of braising liquid, and finish them off at a slightly higher temperature. But the pork's been on just for about half an hour now, but we're going to jump into making our slaw because I want it to be able to sit and soak up in the slaw dressing for a few hours before it's served. Now we're going to start off with a head of red cabbage. We'll cut this into quarters. I'm gonna take off that thin layer on the outside there. And then we're gonna take the core out. We'll make one more cut this way and then shred this up. Nice and thin. And just repeat the process with the rest of the quarters. Next thing we're going to do is peel some carrots and get these grated. We got about two cups of grated carrots there. Just kind of mix all this around. The other thing I'm going to do right now is throw a little bit of sugar on here. And we just kind of squeeze this, open up those cell walls in the cabbage, and let everything start to kind of break down and incorporate. Also going to add about a half teaspoon of our whiskey barrel smoked salt. let that start to draw some moisture out, which is going to end up being a part of the dressing in the end. Then I've got about a cup of pineapple bits here. I'm just gonna get the juice out of there. We'll incorporate that in our dressing. And then I wanna chop these up a little bit finer. So this is gonna add some nice sweetness to the slaw. And if you wanted to, you could use crushed pineapple, but then it just kind of melts into the slaw. I like to have just a little bit of texture. So we take the pineapple bits and chop those down just a little bit. So we're gonna dress this up with a little bit of tangy barbecue sauce. This is the Tar Hill Tang by Plowboys. It's also the sauce we're gonna put on the pork when it's done cooking. So a quarter cup of that, as well as a quarter cup of this smoky mustard sauce. So something with a little tang, that, that mustard zip to it. We'll just kind of mix that around and we can pour it over the cabbage. All right, so we're just gonna get in there, kind of get all of the cabbage coated with our sauces. throw some plastic wrap over this bowl and we can put it in the fridge for the next couple of hours. So I always encourage you to taste stuff before you eat it, right before it's finished. But in this case, I'm gonna wait until this is sat for a few hours because the, the flavors are really gonna change over that 
amount of time. So before we serve this, we will taste this, but for now, we're just gonna throw it in the fridge. Well, our pork's been on for just over two hours now. It's not ready to wrap yet, but I did wanna give you guys a progress report. You see the tops kind of drying out, starting to create that bark, which is great. We could go for a little bit darker color, but if you'll see down here, like there's these moisture pockets, we wanna see those forming all over the surface, not just on the sides there. So we're gonna let it ride. Well, we're about four and a half hours into the cook now and the pork is looking really beautiful. It's ready to wrap. So you can see those moisture pockets that we were talking about before. Generally, it looks like there's a lot more moisture on the outside, but that's a great bark formed. And I love this dark red color. So we're gonna pull these off now. So we're gonna turn this up to about 325 now to finish this off. So I'm gonna double wrap each piece individually once again, this will just kind of make it go a little bit faster to cook these in their own individual packets. We're gonna add, oh, probably about a quarter cup, maybe a little less pineapple juice to the foil pack. A few tablespoons. And you just want to be really careful, especially around the bone over here, that you don't puncture your foil. But at the same time, we're trying to wrap this just as tight as possible to prevent any steam from forming that will take away from that bark we've built. Wrap it up nice and tight. So right back on the top shelf now, and this is more important than ever. When you increase the temperature, you're getting more radiant heat coming off the diffuser. So you wanna put some air, some separation in between your meat and your diffuser because we're cooking hotter and we don't want to scorch anything. Now, like I said before, we're doing pulled pork today, which means we've got to cook this pretty far past 200 degrees. I would say in the 205 to 210 range is what the internal temperature will be when we finish it. Uh, I'm not too concerned about that. We'll kind of check when we get close, but I'll probably give it a good 45 minutes before we even check. Well, we're about seven hours into the cook and our pork has come up to temperature. So let's open it up and take a look at it. Yeah, super tender. Very little resistance there. Look at the temperature, 209. Let's pull that one off. Let's check this guy out. The blade bone half. Let's see if the blade's ready to come out. Yep, looks like it is. That one's done. And check out all that leftover liquid. We're gonna work that right back into the pulled pork. For now, let's just cover this and we'll go grill off some tortillas for our tacos. All right, so we're gonna take the door out of here so and get some direct flame on our tortillas. I'm super stoked that we're using these Carmelo tortillas today. Uh, shout out to Ruben and Carmelo, carmelotortillas.com. They sent these over and they're some of the best tortillas I've ever had. These are flour tortillas, but they're made with pork fat. So we're just gonna get some flame on these, get a little color on them. And this is what we're looking for to get a little bit of air, a little steam happening in there goes quick. All 
All right, we're just gonna get our hands in here and start shredding this stuff up. Ah, that's a good looking bark on the outside. I love that bright red color. It smells awesome. Look at that, just really easily shreddable. Plenty of juice left in there. We'll sop up some of that juice that came out of the packet. We'll sop it all up. Let me get a little nugget here. That's really nice. Got some back end heat to it. We're gonna sweeten it up a little bit with some barbecue sauce. So we're kind of bringing together that, like I said, that taco and that barbecue world for our barbecue pulled pork tacos. All right, so we're gonna get a little bit of pork in here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of that Tar Hill Tang, a little sweet and tangy sauce. Now this coleslaw, pulled it out of the fridge. It's been sitting in there for hours. Gave it a taste and it was spot on. So we don't need to make any adjustments there. I'm gonna come down to the plate. One last little thing I'm gonna add to the top, some bread and butter pickled jalapenos. I'm just gonna go make a whole pile of tacos here. I love the color on this slaw, that purple and orange look awesome. There we go. All right, guys, let's get it. Mm. Smoky, tangy, just a touch of heat. And those tortillas are just money. That's how we do pulled pork tacos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, so there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below. And let's be good to each other. Man, I messed that up. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.